Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are going to be doing a long-term, basically four or five month review on the Nook 10.1 inch tablet uh, and keyboard case. So this review is going to basically be put into two sections, two thirds of it, one half of it is basically going to be this, just as a tablet, right? Tablet, hardware plus software. And the last third of this is going to be for the keyboard case. And using this as more of a productivity tool because we have Pogo pins, uh, which you really only see in Microsoft Surface tablets. And so I thought, well, a nice little Android tablet like this, what if I use it almost like a Chromebook? So a Chromebook light thing. Uh, that'll be productivity, that'll be more into the uh, second half of this video. But for the first half, we will be talking about this. I spent four, close to five months with it, because uh, I don't think you can spend a week or two with any piece of technology and not you know, the bad sides don't show up until you use it for a month or more. So anyways, let's get started on the review, and you will see if you check out the written review, all the hardware reviews on this channel from now on will have written parts uh, put on the blog at the same time as the channel if you want to go into any information that I simply forget to mention in the next 10 minutes. So starting it off, uh, this is about a $130 tablet. Uh, you can get it cheaper. You can even find this on eBay from Barnes & Noble itself. So if you get a nice 15% off coupon, or they kind of do drop the price of these uh, generally for the holidays. So if you want to pick this up as a gift or for yourself, something to remember. Uh, we have to talk about three different classes of Android tablets, uh, unfortunately, because that is what we have in life. We have the kind of cheap drugstore Android tablets that no one should buy. And then you kind of have these entry-level tablets from companies like Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Lenovo, um, a couple other companies in there. And that's going to be your $50 to almost $200 Android tablets. All entry-level, they're all going to have the kind of the same issues. And after that, you kind of have the high-end Android tablets, which is just Samsung. It's just Samsung up there. I don't think Google even makes anything that's not a Chromebook anymore. And so, all right, let's cut out those cheap tablets and let's talk about this against its main competitor, Fire Tablets. Uh, you can read more, basically. Long story short is Fire Tablets are a line of tablets I've wanted to love. I've owned three of them, two uh, $50 Fire Tablets, uh, gave one as a gift, and I had an HD8, which I eventually got rid of. I was going to do a review on those because I like them, and then I spent time with them, and I just went, no. Uh, long story short on those is Fire is, it's an Android operating system, but it's not Android, and you have to use Amazon's App Store, which is awful, and you can, of course, do sideload the Google Play Store. It's really not too many steps. It's not too complicated. Uh, I still found Google Play very buggy on my HD8, so... I would just get something that is natively Android, which is why I've always recommended as a gift, don't give a Fire tablet, give a Nook $50 tablet. Uh, it just works. It just works. You go into your Google Play account, if you give it as a gift, you don't want to be somebody's tech support of why they can't get a certain app, and most apps are not on there like YouTube. Uh, it's coming back now, like last week, Amazon and Google finished their feud. But there's basically a lot of third-party wrappers around those, and they don't work as well. Um, that is... Also, Amazon will sell those at a discount. So normally, this is $130, and the comparable one is the uh, Amazon HD8. Or HD10, sorry. Which is about $150, $160, if not a little higher, I think. But I think it's $160. And they will normally, on Prime Day and holidays and stuff... I think even the HD 10 goes down to like a hundred bucks, but you're you're gonna pay for the problems later down the road. So this is why I would re uh, recommend this. I'm a little sweet on these tablets, even the Fire tablets, because it's a lot of technology for the price. Uh, but this is just hassle-free. So speaking of that, we will be talking about. I want to talk about the bad first, because I think there's a lot of good, especially this tablet gives. Uh, that you know there is just ubiquitous issues for entry-level tablets, so let's get into the bad. First off, you have a terrible uh, front-facing camera, less awful back camera. Uh, you would only use this in case of emergency, like you are trapped in your house and this is the only way to communicate to the outside world. 
don't use it. This is a glass screen, not Gorilla Glass, so it can get scratched, it can break much easier than, say, your phone or any recent phones. Uh, you will have kind of weak bottom firing if you hold it landscape or, or portrait and side firing, whichever landscape you actually uh, decide to hold it in. They're not too bad, I would say. You basically will always be raising it to the highest volume. And if you're doing something like washing dishes and have it, you might simply the sound of your uh, the water is going to overpower this. Maybe. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't, but I would just stick to uh, headphones, things like that. And uh, it's, of course, it's plastic. It's a nice plastic, surprisingly, but it's... It's plastic all the same, and there are two issues I have found with this device that you only really get if you spend time with these. Because of this glass screen, uh, it's not one-to-one. -one. Not like the nicer end, like Samsung tablets or iPads. It's a, it's a little off, I have found. Basically, uh, if you have really small buttons and you go to click or press down, uh, you might be off. You might press another small button next to it. If it's big buttons, you don't have to worry about it. Sometimes this is software, like it just has trouble loading things. So I have been on like forums where I want to click on a thread and it will click either above or below. That's a software issue, but it is definitely a hardware glass issue uh, for any of these tablets, by the way. But be careful where you press. Uh, the second issue is actually the Wi-Fi receiver. And I actually thought, I'm an edge case, okay? So I'm about as far away from the router as possible with walls in between. And basically if I'm in bed and I want to watch a video or something, I will see I'm, I'm losing a connection or not getting a great connection if I hold it out, right? Like this, I will get it. But if I'm holding it like this, I won't. It's not really a, a huge deal. And I actually thought, okay, it's gotta be a weak Wi-Fi receiver because my iPad and my phone can also get a signal there as I found out, they will also rarely drop a signal just because I'm that far away. And what I have discovered is, is this Wi-Fi receiver can get overloaded. It, here's the best way I can describe it. If I'm watching a, a YouTube video before bedtime, uh, naturally because of the weak signal strength, it's going to bring a video down to 480p instead of 1080p that this device can do, or 720p, and the video will run fine. If I decide to hit 720p, obviously for any other device, it's going to take a while to load. For this one, it kind of freaks out and loses the signal. And you have to go manually go back to it or wait till it can reconnect, which is whenever. Um, that has been the issue. It's Again, it's an edge case. You can still watch videos just fine as long as you are at 480p. Uh, and the last thing is going to be, if this is a MediaTek processor, same thing the Fire tablets have, same thing all these kind of entry-level tablets have. Um, it's not the worst MediaTek processor, but, you know, if you're browsing uh, websites, it'll generally take two to four seconds to fully load. Even kind of image-heavy ones, maybe like four or five seconds, which if it's, you're just casually on the couch, it's no big deal, you're not really going to notice. Uh, this thing does struggle if you do like a Google image search and it's trying to display all of these uh, images. It won't do so well there. But all in all, that's all the negative things I have to say, and this is just a trade-off for anything within this category. So let's talk about the good, okay? And that good is actually this screen. This 10.1 inch screen, which is actually bigger than a base iPad, which is like a 9.78. 9.8 inch screen and if you go to a Barnes and Noble it'll be eye-catching because it is 1080p full HD um, even when you open it and you're like putting in all your information you just I can tell you I really liked it and I had I figured there would be a honeymoon period with this screen but it actually surprisingly sticks around uh, I have not disliked the screen or any of the uh, issues, which is why we do this long-term review. But I want to get back to the screen in just a second because there's a lot of more interesting things to talk about with this tablet. Uh, of course, you are going to get a headphone jack. You're going to get a micro SD slot. This is Android, so 
you can put a lot of things on an SD card and basically have a huge storage. It depends on the app, right? Some apps want only internal storage. You have 32 gigabytes, which is really nice. Uh, it's better. It's I don't want to say it's the best because I think Fire tablets have expandable storage if you pay more for it. But it's certainly in a top tier in terms of storage. I do know uh, Walmart's going to have its own store brand Android tablets this year, and they're only 16 gigs, which is not going to be enough storage for you if you're putting different things on this. Um, and you also get these Pogo pens, okay? Like I said, this is a Microsoft Surface sort of deal. We're going to talk about this more in terms of uh, in the productivity second half of this video. Uh, but you basically get two major accessories, right? You're going to get this keyboard case right there, and you can see that is where you put the uh, pogo pins and connect them. And there is also a, um, uh, a stand, a charging stand, so you can have this like on the kitchen counter or uh, on your desk if you're kind of using this as a secondary screen for uh, maybe documents and things like this which I've actually used it for, and it is quite useful. Um, so back to the screen, okay, so we are back to this 10.1, and really, uh, it's only as good as the hardware that's powering it. Okay, we got the MediaTek, kind of struggles for a little bit, but you also get 2 gigs of RAM, which, let me tell you, absolutely lets this thing breathe. Uh, the $50 tablet has a 1 gig of RAM. It actually has interesting benchmarks if you look at them. Uh, it seems to be a little bit more powerful, but that's because it has half the amount of pixels it's pushing. Uh, and basically that one gig of RAM is what throttles that device. With this, if you have a, your browser open with like a tab or two, you have two or more, or two or so, two or three uh, apps running in the background, this Nook is actually going to remember all of that and have the save state so you can jump between the two, which is really useful if you're writing something and you need to go look something up or use dictionary or thesaurus, something like that. That's more for productivity, but be aware. So if you're if you have more apps open, it's going to have to restart the app. So it's going to restart your Facebook app instead of going back to what you were last looking at. But two gigs of RAM. I mean, I had that for a Surface 3 tablet and it was plenty fine. I never really had too many issues and I don't do too many tabs outside of the desktop right here. And so this screen is what's going to sell it to you and it's also what's going to have you keep it. Uh, first thing I did is I got the Netflix app and I downloaded a movie and it looks great. Uh, if, I mean if you don't like holding it or using the case or the charging stand to prop it up uh, there's also Bluetooth, so you can connect this to a sound bar, which is what I did. Uh, so you get the sound coming from there and a really nice, crisp picture on here. I really can't tell you, there's not a lot of 1080p uh, tablets out there. There's a lot of 720p tablets, like the HD8, but not a lot for this. And the screen also goes into, it's really great for web browsing. Like I said, it'll take a couple seconds to load, but you get so much information presented to you on here. So it's really nice to be able to casually read, casually browse. Um, for reading, it's also something I think not a lot of people value. So if you are, if your site is going and you kind of need bigger text, have you ever seen big text on like the six inch e-readers? You basically go to the max size and it's a word per page and you are swiping for literally every single word in a book if you just want large print. Uh, for this, because it's you know bigger than an iPad, you can actually uh, increase the text to that size and still have a fair amount of text on here. So it's, it's less swiping. It actually feels right when you see it in action. Uh, very useful. And so this is when we go and start talking about the software. Basically I'm going to say Android, you want anything that's more native to Android and they do, and Google does things to Android to make it um, more optimized and I will actually segue that into the battery life. I actually didn't think this would have good battery life. It has surprisingly good battery life. Uh, Barnes & Noble is 
accurate when they say it's about eight and a half hours, if not longer, depending on how you use it. Um, I, I think it lives up to that easily, easily. Standby time seems to only lose a single digit percentage, high single digit percentage, so somewhere between like six to nine percent, just leaving it out day over day, uh, which is still not bad. I never let this thing go down to about 40%, but I also use it every day, so I'm kind of regularly charging it. Quick to charge. Um, you get all your favorite apps on here. We're gonna be using the Google Apps for the second half for more productivity, or you can use OneNote or things like this. Um, and that's kind of what you're gonna want to use this for, to have all the app selection, or most of the app selection, on, a, um, on the Google Play Store to just this. And I think it's just a solid Android tablet, so this is why I would also recommend it past more, like, Fire tablets. Because with that, you are stuck in their ecosystem. For this, just download all your Amazon apps. I mean, I already have on here the uh, Kindle and Kobo app, because I use both, uh, along with the Barnes & Noble apps on there, which I think are very good. I think Barnes & Noble is it's better optimized than other apps and I think they're just really good I think not a lot of people mention that that they're they run very well on iOS or Android but again you get all your apps you get well not all most I, I don't think a couple of Google apps support this probably just because it's a larger screen size aspect ratio weird things like that and that is what I would have to say for this thing as a tablet I will give you a review I think this is a very good tablet I think there's really good things about it, really good for hardware for this price, uh, gives you a lot of options, pogo pins with a micro SD headphone jack still in. Uh, everything in it is better than you would expect. Not great speakers, but better than you would expect. Um, not a great processor, but two gigs of RAM really lets it kind of work for you instead of you struggling against it. Uh, and then again, you have Android, so you have all this uh, compatibility you don't have to worry about. And uh, Barnes & Noble has good apps, comes pre-installed, audiobooks, their bookstore. They even have Browsery is on here. If you don't know, that's a book recommendation uh, app that they have. So it's a Q&A thing. You can ask, hey, I'm looking for a book like this, this, or this, and people can answer, and it uses Barnes & Noble's back-end system to recommend the books. Uh, that's on there. It's not on the front screen for some reason. But it's just very good. If you're giving this as a gift or you're wanting to use this, I use this every day at home. Uh, I have an iPad for work, and I basically, for association reasons, I use this when I get home, and I think I've had no wants. You basically know what you're getting with an entry-level tablet like this, but it uh, it definitely punches above its weight with certain things. So I think if you want to give this a gift as a gift, um, whoever is going to like it, and if you want to use it, you're definitely going to use it. You're not going to be like what ended up happening with me and my uh, Fire tablets, and they would just gather dust, and I would pick them back up, and they'd be at 15% battery. Had to get rid of them. But this I can definitely see seeing. Uh, there might even be another one at the end of the year for double the amount of storage, but I think, like I mentioned, like Walmart's having its own uh, Android tablet. This is really good. For 130 well worth the price. If you can get it on discount, even better. And so for now, we are going to go into the productivity section for this review. So, this is an Android tablet. Uh, you can basically use it as like a light Chromebook if you basically just use your web browser and you use the uh, native Google Docs, Google, it's not Excel, Google Cells? I don't remember, I don't use it too often, okay guys? But if you decide to use it like that, you're like, this isn't bad. Basically, this is, if you get the keyboard case, kind of a $400 value Chromebook. Because, uh, you know, anything below 400 those Chromebooks are, they fit the price, right? But at 400, you're getting a nice uh, interface. You're getting, you're starting to get pen support. This doesn't have pen support, but you're getting essentially everything from here, but for productivity. 
So that's actually what interested me in this because I saw the pogo pins and my uh, Surface 3 tablet was dying and I'm like, maybe I could just start working in the cloud. And so I saw the keyboard case, I saw a review of it, of how it finally worked and I went, okay, this, this might work. Let's talk about keyboard case for a second, okay? Because keyboard cases are kind of that uh, two out of three rule. You probably heard this for food, good, fast, or cheap. You can have it good and fast, but it's not cheap. You can have fast and cheap, but it's not good. Same thing for keyboard cases for tablets, which is basically going to be viewing angles of how the tablet is going to be on there. It's going to be protection, because not everything provides full body protection. Some of these are just type covers. And of course, the last one is going to be keyboard. The what I would think is the most important part of a keyboard case. And so what interested me right away is those pogo pins because, all right, let's talk about quickly difference between Bluetooth and pogo. Bluetooth is just a little Bluetooth signal. Uh, any I, Anyone who uses a keyboard case on the iPad knows. Issue with a Bluetooth case is uh, you might use a battery, you might not, but you're basically you're going to be typing and you're going to get double presses or it's going to miss a press just because there was an issue with the connection. Uh, between the two. With pogo pins, it goes straight to the metal. So there is no latency, it goes right to it. Oh, there might be a latency if you're doing like Google Docs, but that's a latency between your connection, not to the device itself. So, of those three things, how does this compare? And it's actually rather affordable. I think it's like 35 or 40 bucks. Uh, not bad, not a bad price. But let's talk about this is a full protecting keyboard case. You know, I had it at the beginning of the video, but let's get this over here. So you'll see it connects magnetically to the pogo pins. Uh, don't th drop it like this. It will absolutely fall and break. Uh, but when you close it, you'll see protected, right? It's going to protect the edges. It's going to protect the face from the fall. Uh, front and back, although the front's a little heavier and actually adds a, a bit of weight to this thing. Uh, but it's actually a really nice uh, cover, soft. I don't know what kind of fabric or whatever it's made from, but it, it looks nice. It's like a navy blue speckled. You really notice it in the light. So good on protection, right? Because like the Surface tablets, they don't have, they only have a a front cover and they use the actual back hinge of the tablet itself for viewing angles so it's not protecting the device at all. Speaking of viewing angles, your viewing angles are from here and you can make it as shallow or as steep as possible. Um, again in keyboard cases you can get uh, good protection and a good keyboard but it'll have like one viewing angle. It will only be like It'll only be this. <laughs> so if you're writing in your lap, harder, right? So if more viewing angles, better. And, but now we can talk about, okay, if you have protection and you have viewing angles, you might have a crappy keyboard. And the keyboard on this thing, um, it's close, man. It's close to being, this is almost perfect. Let me, uh, let me explain. So you look at this, and this is a 10.1 inch uh, size. So it's not like a uh, iPad, which is a little smaller and you have to make room. Basically, this is a full-sized keyboard, nice pressing keys. As you saw, there is a function row on this, which is very nice if you want to raise the volume, uh, change the brightness, uh, screenshots, things like this. Get into settings, there's even a little nook button and that will take you to your last red book. Um, solid, solid keyboard. What's my issue with it? These are all painted on. So this is not a backlit keyboard, which, you know, I try not to write at night anymore. <laughs> I try not to be as much of a workaholic, but again, if you're just kind of in a dark room or something, it is nice to have a backlit keyboard. If this had it, I mean, honestly, uh, my Surface 3 tablet had it. This would be perfect. I would say this is the perfect keyboard case. I'm going to be doing an iPad case right after this. And uh, 
That keyboard leaves a little bit to be desired, but okay. That should that should settle things, right? Protection, viewing angles, very good keyboard. Um, really, the only issue for this device is going to be in the tablet itself, if you use it for work. And here is my view from this. That's why I have two tablets, and I'm not using uh, laptops anymore. Tablets have better battery life. Um, they're just more intuitive to use. You, you're not struggling with, like, Windows. iOS and Android, just better operating systems, uh, in my opinion. Not in terms of certain apps, but, you know, just kind of day-to-day -day use. This is smaller, lighter, lasts longer. The tablet here is, like I said, if you're at home earlier in the review and it takes a couple extra seconds to load, not a big deal. This all changes when you are trying to do work, right? Because they're what I would call micro annoyances. That's why I use an iPad, because I can switch between a lot of different apps or tabs and it'll just load instantly not a problem for this a little bit of loading and at first you think it's not that big of a deal and then it just starts building up over time um, especially if you're using google docs and you have a little bit of latency and you're moving to something else like i said the two gigs of ram is going to be fine for that but a lot of just small annoyances are going to build up over time which is why i use this more as a um, casual tablet than what I originally did, which was a Chromebook. It can do it. Uh, it certainly runs. I would recommend only using Google stuff, not um, Microsoft's stuff, because I think that's not as well optimized. Obviously, Google optimizes their apps for their operating system. And if you were going to use it, that's what I would recommend. Use Google Docs, use the Google Suite, and you won't have that, that many issues. Um, that's a personal thing. I can't really use that. I'd rather just use a stronger device like an iPad. An iPad's also like double or three times the price. And you can get this whole thing, keyboard case and, uh, and tablet for 200 bucks or less easily. So if you are kind of pushed for price, this will do in a pinch. This will do everything with just the drawbacks of an entry-level tablet, right? Samsung tablets might do something similar, but then again, they're also <laughs> two or three times the price. Um, for what it does, yes, I like this a lot. I just didn't like it enough to use as a productivity tool, especially because as a writer, I use different apps. I use Scrivener. There's no Scrivener for Android. I would have loved to try an Android, uh, an Android app but it's only for iOS and I'd rather use that and remove all those annoyances for work at home I don't care man I'll load things up take the two or three seconds whatever anyways that is going to be it for my review I hope that helps Nook 10.1 now as a productivity machine is good I think it's I think it can be really good when you take in to the idea you have a keyboard case that is almost perfect it's just the tablet that's going to let you down. I think it's a very good tablet for home. I think it's just a good tablet if you're using it uh, every day for hours on end. You really want something that's going to be working for you instead of you uh, working around it. But in terms of where it sits in these Android tablets, yeah, it's a great gift. It's a great thing to pick up for yourself. Um, there's not a lot of tablets like it, so I like that Barnes & Noble still keeps up this, their actual tablet line and their e-reader line because of that. Um, you're really not going to go wrong. You're really not going to dislike it if you pick it up. Like I said, I, I always worry about a honeymoon period. This is why I took about four months for this review. Uh, and I, I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. Like, I've gotten rid of other devices. It'll probably be what I use at home for the next couple years, and when it finally dies, hey, you know, it was pretty cheap. Anyways, that is it for this review. I hoped it helped. If you want kind of more information, like I said, link in the description to the blog post for more in-depth this, if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. I wrote that a while ago. I don't think I forgot anything. And speaking of, this is probably the last Nook review on the channel. Uh, Barnes & Noble is going to be releasing a new e-reader 
that's like the new Kindles where it's uh, going to integrate the audiobooks, which is going to be interesting, but I don't use, uh, I don't listen to audiobooks that often, and I certainly don't use it on my e-reader. I will use it on my phone. And for that, you have more options than buying it. You can have subscription services like Audible or Kobo, or you can just use your local library and download books from that. Uh, for my money, again, Audible is like $15 a month. If you like audiobooks that much, it's savings. Kobo is $10 a month, just an app. And I'm always having my phone on me, whereas I don't have my e-reader on me all the time. But hey, for people who like that, it's going to be good. It's essentially going to be what I assume is a, either a Nook Low Light 3 with more storage. Anyways, that is it for it. this on the channel. I'm going to now record the iPad review or the iPad keyboard case. It's going to be a lot like that, just uh, a little more resentful. See you later.